Let's do it. We are live. Live. Ultimate. Yeah, it just now said live on mine. <laughs> I was yeah. waiting for mine to say live. Ultimate Urban Fantasy Podcast, episode number 39. You're listening to the Ultimate Urban Fantasy Podcast. We've got all that's awesomely supernatural on TV, movies, books, games, and more. Your one-stop podcast for vampires, werewolves, mutants, and myths. And now here are your hosts, Archer, Sherry, and Ravenheart. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm S.A. Archer, co-author and creator of the urban fantasy series The She, which is spelled S-I-D-H-E. Um, my co-host, <laughs> I'm going to start spelling that because I don't know that people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> My co-host is Sherry Samin, actress and voice talent. Oh yeah. And our other Yeah. <laughs> and our other co-host and techie guy who's being very challenged today by Google is Yeah, they they <laughs> keep fixing things that are not broken. So, yeah. <laughs> Keeping me on my toes. I would also like to say he looks yeah. like he's in twilight blue. <laughs> 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 yeah, that that's thanks to Mother Nature and the, <laughs> the lighting in here right now. Because I, I have the sun right over my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's whiting everything out on that side. <laughs> and then I don't have any is... other uh I don't have any other lights on, so <laughs> mm -hmm. But you are, in case you didn't know, S Ravenheart. <laughs> My co-author and creator on this sheet, and this, making a gesture even though on my Google Hangout I can't see anything, <laughs> is the ultimate urban fantasy podcast. So <laughs> hopefully we will not be overly technically challenged today. Oh, uh, I hope not. That's why I'm, I'm shutting up. I'm not talking. <laughs> oh, no, you need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't see, like, anything, so I'm... And I know that the audio... Yeah, I, Assuming it's this way for you, it's like when you start to talk, I'm picking you up like 10 seconds later. So oh. sometimes I feel like I'm talking over people. Oh. So I don't mean to do that, but yeah. I've got Ravenheart right down the hall. Oh. And I'll hear him talking down the hall, and 10 seconds later, I'll hear him over the headphones. So yeah. I know that they I have, have a definitely delay. messed with the audio as well. It's not coming through nearly as quickly. And now my video has disappeared. Oh, well, as long as you can hear us, we can see you, yeah. so you're good. <laughs> Google, please stop, please. So, I, before we do the Witches of East End, I just thought of this. I tweeted l last week, NBC did a Why We Love Vampires half an hour or an hour special. I didn't know if you, oh. well, I know you don't have TV, but yeah. let me tell you something. I watched it with James, and I went, oh, my God, that's every vampire we mentioned. They mentioned all the movies and the, the stuff that we <laughs> mentioned. And I'm like, they watched our podcast. Somebody watched our <laughs> podcast and stole our idea because we did this vampire thing weeks ago. And, but really what it was, they were doing like a preemptive show for Dracula for Jonathan Reese Myers. It was kind of like yeah. a setup. Like a, but mm -hmm. anyway, they were naming, I thought it was hysterical. I'm like, yep, that's the one we brought up. Yep. They they did um, Nosferatu. I mean, they did they did everybody. They did, I'm like, yes, yes. And they were saying the same things we did. They were interviewing like comedians and other actors of different vampire shows and, uh -huh. and different things like that. And I was like, I have to mention that because everybody we mentioned, there were a couple though that they mentioned and I have to do a shout out for the shows because they were on, oh, they named some, okay. Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage, which is a comedy. Ah. Uh, yeah. See? Yeah, well, I didn't like that one. That you one didn't? was creepy. Was it? No. Okay, well, I thought I would do that. Did and Frank okay. Langella in um, Dracula from 1979, I thought, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that Love was a Classic. First, yeah, and Love at First Bite because yeah. it was a comedy. 
and it was like the most yeah, anti Dracula. I mean, he's tan worse yeah. than this. Yeah, you know that's yeah. what made it funny. <laughs> and then Elvira, I'm like, why didn't I mention Elvira? Oh my god! I didn't you know? know Elvira was a vampire. Yeah, I she, she was just yeah. a mistress of the dark. Or whatever no, she, she exactly, that's what a mistress of the dark is—a a female vampire. Yeah, and then of course, yeah. my favorite. She never had my, fangs. Yeah, yeah, she didn't have fangs. But I was gonna say my favorite, and I she watched. Probably it couldn't I, talk over the fangs back oh. then. I mean, like Sherry was having <laughs> issues Sorry, with Sherry. fangs. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She didn't wear fangs, but anyway, the, the show, I swear, the one I grew up watching, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, because that's Boris Karloff as Dracula and that. And then, But those were the only ones we didn't really mention, I think. I think that was, that. there might have been one with Christopher Lee, and I can't remember what that one was called, but it was a Dracula movie. But yeah, yeah. But all I the didn't other ones really like him as it either. But yeah, but all the other ones but, and yeah. the the one I liked, um, yeah. Gary Oldman was their ultimate Gary uh -huh. Oldman, and I forgot who the other one was. They were like their ultimate Dracula, and I'm like, yes, because that's who I picked too. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> Did you see the Nicolas Cage one? No, I never. I didn't even know about it. But they showed clips of it, and he was he was kind of strange. He's like, stab me, stab me. With, he's trying to get people to stab and kill yeah. me. I'm a vampire. Yeah, it was essentially. Um, it, depending on the way you kind of watched it, and I think that when you when you look at it, the way I saw it is that he's never really truly a vampire. He's just psychotic. <laughs> he goes out and he like goes to like a goth place. Uh -huh. Where the people dress up like vampires, and he—I don't know if she actually bit him or if he just thinks that she bit him, but he thinks he's a vampire now. <laughs> and because he's—he's he's like trying to react like he's a vampire, like he's trying to avoid the sunlight, and he—you know—he goes to his job, and he goes to his job, and he thinks he needs to get blood, so he attacks a coworker and tries to bite her, and she. <laughs> gets away and tells her brother, I think he might have even heard her, um, she tells her brother, who's like this, you know, big sort of fella, and he's like, oh, that guy's not getting away with this. Uh -huh. And he uh, goes to Nicolas Cage's house, and like he's like being insane, and the sun's come out, so he's pulled like the couch over on himself or something, and it's been yeah. a while since I've seen it, but he's like got himself covered up, and the guy gets in there, he's like, you know, you coward, and pulls him out from underneath the, the shade, and he's like, oh, no, the sunlight, and then he, he's got, you know, he's been trying to stab himself for, you know, days, and he's got his little, his little, uh, uh, wooden stake, and he's like trying to push it into himself, and he's like, can't do it, and he's like, kill me, kill me, and the guy's like, bam, and kills him with it, and they're like, that's the end of that, you know, <laughs> so, he hits him right on the stake, and he stabs, so it kills him. So I mean, it was very creepy and it was disturbing. I thought they made. This I thought comedy. I did not. I did not I get into that. It's a dark, that. dark comedy. If that's it's a comedy. like a dark comedy. It's very <laughs> dark comedy. Yeah, it's one of those ones that, like, okay. uh, it doesn't take much to make me feel a little messed up. Like that was one of the ones that was like, that's just messing with my, my yeah. psychological health. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to watch this movie. So. Wow. I'm glad I didn't so see that. Off on the Dracula thing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But I just wanted to, I was yeah. like, oh, I have to mention it on the podcast. I swear to God, they were all saying the same stuff. We were naming the same movies and the same people. It was funny. Mm -hmm. But okay, I'm done. <laughs> we are, you know, we are breaking the waves. You know, we are, we are leading the pack. We are, we are ultimate. We are the ultimate urban fantasy podcast. The ultimate, yeah. That's why we rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this week, like you said, we're talking about the witches of East End. Uh huh. Um, I saw up to the fourth. Um. We lost her. Okay. She, she saw something on the witches of East End. <laughs> I am just gonna say that I haven't kept up on it, and I'll wait for her to come back. Yeah. Maybe I should. Well, should I keep going, or should I wait for her? Well, it said she popped back in, but she's not there. Oh, you Amy. have disappeared. Oh, Archer. <laughs> Archer. Maybe uh, she should sit down next to you, and then you guys can both do it together there. We. Hmm. 
I I don't know much about this show. I couldn't get. Well, I'm afraid to move very on. Far into it. I'm but afraid to move on. It's just not my cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, she's the one who was going to do. Yeah. Most of the talking about it, and well, I can talk about it, but Google I just... has fixed stuff that and broken it. Google uh-huh. has broken our podcast. Okay. Well, I can keep going. I just didn't want to because in case there was. How about you come in here? You take my computer. I hate that this is happening live. That's okay. But hey, this is what live's about. This kind yeah. of stuff. <laughs> yeah. We should do. This is the stuff that will get edited out before. <laughs> no Jeopardy music. No Jeopardy music, please. Where would you like me to sit? On the side of you? I'll bring in a chair. Nope. nope. Well, you're sitting right here. You're... Are you going to just step out? Yes. Okay. If I knew a song and dance, I would entertain in the interview. Do you want to go back there and try and sit? No. I don't have any um, songs that I can sing, because I can't sing, except for nursery rhymes. And I don't think anybody wants to hear a nursery rhyme. Okay, I haven't heard anything you just said, because I'm just not... No, that's okay. I'm talking to the people. I'm talking okay. to people, our fan <laughs> page, our oofers. I'm talking to our oofers, and I'm just in there going, I would do a song and dance if I could, if I, if I can't sing. And, and according to this, we do have one viewer, so you're hanging in there with us. I've got a yeah. lot of light behind me. Let me see if I can adjust this a little bit. Uh, I can see our uh, saltines on the well. table back there. Hi, awesome. saltines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, we can get. This. I love oh. candles, and you've got lots of candles. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna try this again. <laughs> I was, I was, I was gonna keep going, and then I thought, man, there might be things that you might want to talk about in the interim. So yeah. I was afraid to go on. Okay, you saw, you saw something with Witches of East End. Yeah, I saw the the first four episodes. Okay. And then you saw the first episode. I saw the first two episodes. And then I didn't see the third. I tried to watch the fourth on the computer, but it, the server kept shutting me off. I finally gave up. Huh. I would watch like a couple minutes of it, and then it would boot me out, and I gave up. Yeah, you know what? I thought it was just my little computer because it is like such a crappy little computer. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, when I was trying to watch from the website, um, I had to get to where I wasn't truly focusing on the screen because... Um, the um, let me fix this a little bit. Okay. <laughs> it's mobile um, mobile podcast. With with the with the screen, their mouths weren't synced with the voices. It was slightly off. Really? So um so I was like I can't keep I can't watch it real, real close to have to kind of like Yeah, I can't watch something when yeah. it's off sync. Yeah. So the whole time I was doing it, but it so like I said, I really probably should have glasses, <laughs> but I'm never going to admit that to Raven Hart because across the, the room from me. Who um, has known me for years. <laughs> so all I had to do was just let my eyes unfocus, and I couldn't tell the difference, really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so I was able to enjoy it sufficiently well. Well, good. You can um, me in on the last episode, because I only watched, like, 15 minutes of it, I think. Okay. Um, I don't remember which one, which thing was happening in which episode so much, because there is a lot of blend through. It's like one big story. Yeah. You yeah, know, because yeah, yeah. um, it's like in the very first episode. Uh, well, let's let's kind of give people a little rundown of what what's uh, yeah. going on on the show. Um, yeah. There's uh, two generations of women that we're mainly focusing on. Mm-hmm. It's the mom and her sister, and then the mom's da- two daughters, mm-hmm. and they're all witches, um, and they're under curses. Now mm-hmm. the aunts curse is that um, she becomes a cat and she's got she's immortal except for she's got like nine lives yeah it's um, not really, yeah it's like a temporary immortal yeah she's, she's gonna live a very long time but she, she turns into a cat periodically and she can't always control that when that happens um, but she's got her nine lives and so she's been living all this time mom also has been living all this time but mm-hmm. her curse is and, and it's like hundreds of years at least yeah. They've been alive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but her curse is that she keeps giving birth to the same two girls over and over again, and they grow up to about 30, mid 20s, 30s, 
they get killed. Mm -hmm. when, right after they die, she's like immediately pregnant again. Like, mm -hmm. it's not even like she can say, I'm not going to be with anybody, I won't have any kids. Yeah. The pregnancy just occurs. Yeah. And, it's and like, it's their souls again. What a horrible yeah. curse as a mother to constantly give birth and then to watch your, watch them grow up and then watch them get killed. Because she yeah. never gets killed for the witchcraft, just her daughters. So right. how horrific of a curse is that to... I mean, the only good part is knowing you'll see them again in a little bit. I mean, that's the only good thing is... Yeah, and but they're not going to remember, I think. I think generally no, well, they always had to tell them, didn't they? Or did she do no, the no, no, they always remember. knew. Yeah, okay. this life, this lifetime she wanted to do something different and put a, cast a spell on them when they were young that they wouldn't remember they were witches. Okay. Which is different from the book. In the book, they knew. They always okay. knew. So this, like you were saying earlier before we started, this is actually based on a tele or not television, on a book series. Yes. Yes, of the same name. And it's a spin-off because she's written a lot of stuff. I was looking up... Um, Oh, I don't have my stuff in front of me. Um, <laughs> Melissa De La Cruz, she's written a lot of things. But okay. it comes actually from The Blue Bloods, which is a teen teen book on vampires in New York. Okay. And this is a, The Witches of East End is a spin-off, and she called it more for her adult readers because her teen readers were now becoming adults. So okay. this is, yeah. So, so she has another spin-off too, but I, I didn't have that. So they're supposed to be vampires in this world with the witches. They haven't really shown sure. them. Yeah, they're all in the same universe. They're all, yeah, it's all happening. Cool. But yeah, but the vampire ones are in New York, and they're in Connecticut, Long Island. They're in Long, I Long Island, okay. I think. Yeah, I should I know no that. <laughs> I know, I should know that. But I, I, it's off of a Long Island. So yeah. it's a good tie. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, um, it's pretty. I think that the... the settings that they've shown so far. It looks like mm -hmm. a good setting, like good New England town and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not Salem, though. I think, though, they lived in Salem at one time. One we, of the girls, yeah. Yeah, but, well, that's what I was going to, when I read about the book, I can think I can delve this. The curse okay. is their um, involvement in the Salem witch trials, according to the book. I mean, this, they said, the series is kind of following it. Like the mm -hmm. aunt, as far as I know, is not in the book series. Okay. As far as as far as I read, but yeah, the curse happened because of their involvement of whatever kind of involvement in the Salem witch trials. So okay. at least you get an idea of maybe how long this has been going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I know that they said at least hundreds of years, and yeah, like, and they do show like one of the times that the girls died was they were burnt at the stake in Salem. Mm -hmm. uh, around the time of the, of the witch trials. So, you know, at least that time, you know, at least since then. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> if not, you know, before that. And I, 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 I yeah, thought they and hinted gonna, it being longer than that, but I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, and I'm not going to give anything away, but I think the book series is probably, um, well, it always is, but I think it's, gonna, it's way better than this te television series because what mm -hmm. I read is really really interesting, and I'm not going to give anything mm -hmm. away, but it makes so much sense. When I read the plot line, I went, ah, uh, of the book, but I won't tell anybody. <laughs> but, okay. Well, they can read for themselves, I mean, <laughs> but, but I went, oh. Yeah. I've got a dog a down here demanding attention, so. Oh, okay. So, moving around yeah, it, made, it made what was happening now made more sense. I was like, ah. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? When I first started watching the series, first my first thought, and I, I I stand by this first thought, the way they're doing it on the TV series, anyways, uh -huh. is that this is Charmed if Lifetime had done Charmed. Like it is so like it's so Lifetime, and yet there's a lot of the elements of Charmed, but it's it goes beyond. Charmed was really like yeah. They started it out like it's YA, and they had like the YA mentality in charm. Like, yeah. You know, where at the end of the day, it's, we're always okay. You know, um, we'll, we'll get through it. And, you know, then we have our, it's important to us that we went to a dance, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where this is more like a grown-up version of yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, no, I, I hate to admit it, but my husband said the same thing, which probably... <laughs> doesn't give much man points there, but he's, he was like, it's like charmed. 
Yeah. It's, it's a level <laughs> up from charm, and it's more adult. Than yeah. It's, well, it's and, Lifetime's version. It's Lifetime's yeah. charm. I it, didn't know. get it. I didn't get it at first. I'm like, the only thing they have in common is the fact that they're females and witches. I don't understand. You know. I'm like that, yeah. but now I now I see what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the sister thing happening, and the you mm -hmm. know, and the mom and, and daughter things, those kind mm -hmm. of dynamics, and um, this evil force trying to uh, make the bad stuff happen, even though she put a, a spell. That's what it, that's what yeah. seems to be going on right now, and is somebody's trying to break that spell, make sure that. It still happens the way it's supposed. The curse is supposed to happen. Yeah, so. there's some unnamed evil that is a shapeshifter. Uh, mm -hmm. That's you know behind the trouble that has started in episode one. Mm -hmm. um, and the shapeshifter, lots, a lot of the times, will be in the appearance of the mother. And, mm -hmm. and in the first episode, she she commits murder while looking like the mother and leaves a yeah. witness. Who then goes? This is the one that did it to me. Yeah, and so, yes. so she's been accused of murder since the first episode. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I got the episode four, and she's still, you know, her lawyer is involved, and they're getting ready to go to court, and all this kind of stuff. You know. Yeah. So, so are we going to yeah. do spoilers on it, or no? Are we going to talk about this last episode, or no? Um. Well, I'm going to just talk about what I recall from the four episodes. Oh, okay. Uh. So, spoiler alert for anybody. Um. Okay. But, but it's going to be, it's not going to be overly spoily. Cause you, this is one of the things when we talk about shows and stuff, it's like you, you can't not talk about anything. Like, you know, everything could be seen as a spoiler. True. So, so we're just going to talk about And by the time this is out, if people haven't already seen the first four episodes, <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll probably be episodes in. So yeah, kind of get our, our view of what's happened and what they've already seen. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the aunt put something in that woman's ear before she testified, and now she doesn't remember anything. So now it looks like the mother's going to go free because she's like, I don't know anything. Oh, I don't you know what? This is one of the things about this show that is like making me go, oh, my gosh, because these witches, they're not very nice people. You know, it's like I kind of can see wanting to mess them up. Because yeah. they're, they're doing things that are not nice. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the one girl in a previous life, she, Freya, um, yeah, Freya she had, um, did you see the, the one with the, uh, the picture? Yeah, and the she, put, she put him yeah. in there. She locked him in there. Yeah, he hit her, and so she locked him in a painting. Okay. That, but they left him in the painting. And for what, hung it. 70 years, and they hung it on their wall. As yes, and just, hung it on their wall. Yeah, and and walk it's by it. in the desert. He's burning in the desert. It's like you had something. no mercy. On the yes. Mountain. I was like, that's something really psychotic to know that the man is, yeah, suffering yeah. and to walk by it every day. Yeah, and they're like, well, we're trying not to kill people now. So, like, we're, we're better that it's like you'd be more merciful if you just kill a guy. No, no, no. Then leave no, him no. suffer forever in a painting. They're, they're only better because they don't have a memory, because the mother <laughs> put that spell on them. That's the yeah, only well, reason they're better. If they because they get him in another painting at the end, and they bury him in the ground where he's never gonna get out of this painting. See, well, that was supposedly. the episode I missed. I missed the ending of that one. Okay, so, yeah. So, so the guy gets out of the painting, and he comes after. Her. Because if yeah. he can get her into a painting and kill her in the and painting, and her, she'll yeah. be, her soul will be stuck there. She cannot reincarnate. Mm -hmm. um, so he tries to do that. And so she gets stuck in the painting, and um, she manages to get herself out of the painting um, mm -hmm. as the, the painting is burning from the inside. And um, the, the picture, what the, where she was at, was in a, a speakeasy. Yeah. Um, he catches that on fire, and he's heading out. Because he's got the little tool, and yeah. so she she knocks knocks him in the head. She takes the little tool and she gets out. Mm -hmm. So he's stuck in there when it's burning, but or her sister um, Ingrid, who doesn't realize her sister had gotten out of the painting, goes in there and casts the spell to release a person stuck in a painting, uh -huh. which lets bad guy come bursting out of the painting. Um, and so they, he comes after them again, and uh, in the process of him trying to come after them, uh, 
the ant casts, or I think the mom of the ant casts the spell, and the other one takes a picture and hits him with it, and it, instead yeah. of just bashing the, it over his head, he goes into the picture. And at least it's a nice environment this time. I think it was a garden or something. And they go, at least he's got a nicer place this time. They dig a hole in the cemetery, and they bury the painting. And they go, why didn't we just kill him? And she's like, well, we're trying to do not do that so much. And it's like, oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just, you know, that's not yeah. how you handle your, your issue. You know, it's like, no wonder people are trying to kill you. You do stuff like this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The mean. Why couldn't there be a happy medium? I don't like the. I'm so goody goody, and and I don't do anything. I don't like that either. Like making mm. them too. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then making them psycho, so like sociopath or psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> Can't find a happy medium in there somewhere. Yeah, and when and before the lady lost her memory, and they were, uh, she was still saying, you know, the mom killed my husband, um, and you know, which is like. She has lost her husband. Her husband. And she believes this person has killed her, and she is, you know, understandably upset. Yeah. And the aunt just like snaps off some kind of spell that makes her yeah. bleed out of her mouth. And then they're yes. like, "Oh well, we'll just leave." You know, and it's like she goes to the hospital. She's still bleeding. This woman hasn't done anything wrong. I right? Know. She just keeps getting attacked magically over and over. And then you said like she gets this bug in her ear. Yeah, the <laughs> aunt did something. Like they just are torturing this poor innocent person. She is. Did you see her when she was testifying? And she goes, "I don't remember anything." And she's like, and she, you can tell she doesn't understand why she doesn't remember anything. And the mother's going, "What's going on?" Because the mother's supposedly <laughs> getting out. No, that must happen in, in like the next episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, far. in this last episode. This is the last thing I saw before it kicked me off. The server kicked me off again for the final time. But the woman mm -hmm. is, like, all nervous, and she's pouring herself a glass of water, and she looks down, and all she sees is mealyworms, the mealworms. Oh, I don't know. She's like, ah! She freaks out right there in the courtroom, but everybody else just sees water. Mm -hmm. So she looks... I'm like, well, that, that's what I was thinking. I was like, this poor lady. Mm -hmm. She's traumatized. All she knows is this person killed her husband and they're putting her through that kind of Yeah, I was thinking the yeah. same thing. I'm like, I'm not getting sympathy for you people. Mm -hmm. Definitely not for the aunt. Because the aunt's doing most of the bad stuff. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. she seems to be anyway. But she kind of came in that way. She kind of came in going, yeah, what's up? I've been mm -hmm. living in New Orleans and I, you know, she came in like, um, like she had street cred. <laughs> like yeah. she, she, just came, she just came in like, yeah, I'm tough, and I know it. So it, it makes mm -hmm. sense that she's more of the aggress aggressive one of the three. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> and she apparently has no issue with walking around naked. <laughs> no, she does she's, not. She's naked in, like, every episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like, What's I'm a cat. I'm naked as a cat. I'm a woman. I'm naked. That was one of my favorite parts is the mother's, like, talking to her and everything, and, like, don't tell my daughters. I don't want them to. And then she was like, and please, would you put some clothes on? And because that's yeah. what I was thinking, I'm like, because that's what I'd be thinking. I'm like, in the love of God, I don't need to see that. Yeah, you know? yeah especially you know. It's yeah. Like, oh my gosh. My daughters could, you know, you look like a crazy person walking around. You know, that's what I'd yeah. be thinking. I mean, not like we're all female. We're all females, but at the same time, really. It's yeah, like, and she and she pulls out the you know the naked woman thing. I don't know if you saw this episode where where she needed to get the the bug for the ear. Did you uh -uh. see how she got that? No. Uh -uh. Okay. Um, there was, um, she was looking up for this special butterfly that's supposed to have magical properties, which is, like, yeah. really, really rare. And she finds out that, of course, somebody locally is, you know, a butterfly collector. So she finds out where he lives, and she goes to his apartment building. And as he's coming home, he sees this black cat run past him. He's like, oh. You know, somebody's cat got out, and he's, he goes to the, looking for the cat. And yeah. then here's this naked woman, and she's like, oh, I was looking for my cat, and I was getting ready to take a shower, and the cat ran out, so I came running out naked, and I locked myself out, and now I'm just standing there <laughs> naked in front of you, and I can't get in my apartment. And he's like, well, if you want to hang out in my apartment till the super gets <laughs> here, you know? <laughs> and she's like, sure. Oh, yeah, she God. goes in there, and he's like showing her, you know, he gives her uh, his... Uh, his shirt to wear. Oh, what and a gentleman. She's, yeah, so she's just got like one little button done, and otherwise she's just hanging out. And, and uh, he's showing her his butterfly collection because, you know, this is a beautiful naked woman. He's yeah. like, oh, my gosh, you know, he's gushing. Yeah. And um, so she's like, I'm going to extract him 
for a second so I can take this butterfly and take off. And so she spills his tea on him or his wine or whatever he was drinking. He gets it on his shirt. He's like, oh, oh, hang on just a second. He whips off his shirt. He's buff. You know, he's like really, you know, well built. Yeah. And then uh, she was like, hmm. <laughs> so she's like, yeah. Hey, this will wait a second. And she like yeah, maybe. throws him down on the couch and then go to town. And, oh. and after after they're done, and he's like, you know, unconscious because it was just so amazing. Then she steals the butterfly and takes off. Yeah, you know, I have so, a detour. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know. like yeah, my family's in danger, but you're really yeah. <laughs> You know, you, she's naked. We hey, she's naked. He's there. Yeah. The butterfly's there. She can get yeah. out. You're naked. Yeah. I'm naked. The butterfly's naked. It's priorities. It's it's, yeah. Yes, it's priorities. You gotta, you gotta get your needs met when you when you, an opportunity arises. Oh my oh. gosh. I, I, I yeah. I, I when I watch movies or shows like that or I read stuff where people detour like for things like that and I'm like, are you kidding me? Is that really? The, I mean, I have lust and I have a lot of you know urges and mm -hmm. stuff too, but you know, things <laughs> come before that. You know, if I'm yeah. saving my family like, or you yeah. know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because you know, I think this was the episode where the guy was running around out of the painting. You know, it's like hers. She doesn't know what's going on. You know. So, so anyway, so so that's the aunt. Um, what's her <laughs> that's name? The aunt. Yeah, her name is her. The aunt's name is Wendy. Um, and, yeah, Wendy the witch, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the mom's name is Joanna, like you said. Um, yeah. So those are the two of them. They've got kind of they've got a pretty good sisterly dynamic going. Yeah. Don't you think? They, yeah, yeah. I, could buy I can it. see why they added the aunt character. I mean, she brings mm -hmm. in a lot to yeah. the story. Yeah. Yeah, and she keeps bringing the, like, when the mom wants to be like, uh, you know, there's no magic. I don't want them to know about magic. I don't want them doing magic. And the aunt's like, yeah, I'm going to tell them all about magic. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take them around the corner and show them what's what. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she's not as dumb. Like, at first, one of the things that this show's done a couple times is where I'm like, really? For real? You're going to do that? Really? And I'm mm -hmm. like, ugh, that's so dumb. And then they'll do something and I go, oh, I see why you did that. So maybe oh. it wasn't quite as dumb as I thought it was. Like, um, Joanne comes in and she sees, you know, the ants going through their big magical book of spells, their mm -hmm. big book of shadows or, or grimoire, whatever they're calling it. And, um, you know, she's going over it with her, uh, the ants going over it with one of the girls. And, you know, they're trying to look for a spell for whatever. And, and she's like, no magic. She takes the spell because she throws it into the fire. I'm like, really? You, you're going to get rid of... All these spells that could save you from the bad guys that are out there. You're just going to burn that book. Really? That's not, like, the smartest thing you could have done, you know? And, you know, she's like, forget it. Go in. That's it. It's, a, it's done. And it's all burned down to ashes. And you're like, okay. all right, that wasn't the smartest thing to do. But nothing then like after they leave, Yeah, there's nothing like overreacting. Yeah. After they leave, she gets her little dustpin, and she gathers all of the dust up. <laughs> And she puts it into the container, into the big, um, um, like the treasure chest that they had it in. And mm -hmm. she closes it up and she does a little spell. She opens it up and it comes out perfectly fine. Oh, well, then there. So I'm like, okay, okay, well, okay yeah. yeah. So she okay. wasn't as dumb, you know, as I thought she was. <laughs> okay, that makes sense because then you're also putting a stop to them because they think the book's gone. Right. And okay. they see it later and, and they're like, wow. You know, she's like, you're not the only one who's bad. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, and the thing that yeah. gets me is this whole Freya triangle between the. Oh uh, yeah, you know me in romantic triangles. How I was yes. like going, really? Do we have to do that? Do we yes. really right, have? To right do off that? the bat, too, mm -hmm. it was like boom. She's got, she's engaged, she's in love, and then this guy shows up, and you know the new brother is somehow tied in with that evil mm -hmm. entity because they showed up around the same time, and there's. Mm -hmm. a, Freya got, you could tell it wasn't her. She was under a spell of something, or. Right. I mean, kept making tell. her dream about I mean, him and stuff before she yeah, ever met him. Yeah, yeah, and then having an affair with him. And I mean, you could tell it wasn't, it was her, but she was being mm -hmm. influenced. So at first, that was one of those things that I was like, I don't know. Mm. I'm going to have to try and just get past this. Me you know? too. Yeah. But then they've done some things that made me think, okay. Maybe it wasn't just a throwaway love triangle. Exactly. Um, her 
one of her curses is that she, you know, she's always falling in love and it's not working out. But yeah. um, it did you see anything that so far that um, the two brothers, by the way, um, her fiance is Dash, and his brother is Killian. Yeah. Um, and of course, Dash is very dashing. They're both <laughs> gorgeous. Let's let's. Face oh yeah, they are. I, mean, I Dash is like myself. you know the right the right guy. You know, he's very well groomed. He's a doctor. He's wealthy. He's you know he's the good, perfect guy that you you know mm. you imagine. You know, this is the ideal. And of yeah. course, Killian has got the longer hair, and he lives on a boat. He's the bad boy. Yeah, he's the bad boy. So right. they got the whole complete opposite vibe going on between the mm. two. That's like which. If they merged, would make an awesome man. Yeah, <laughs> she I'm needs to saying. cast this spell. That's what she yeah. needs to, <laughs> to merge them or their personalities or you know, mix so up. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, but if, if you read the book, it explains all this. I'm just saying. Yeah, people, they've hinted at the show. Now, yeah, I don't know. The, in in the show, they've hinted that there's actually some, something magical going on with these boys. Um, the book like, is. Interesting, is it? Um, yes. Because Killian, um, in one of the dreams, said he'd waited 400 years for Freya. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes you go. So you I know that was a big that you lived me. that long, and you know, and then and then Dash was the doctor when the lady had the blood coming out. He was the emergency room doctor that was treating her, and he's mm -hmm. like, okay, just just open your mouth wide and close your eyes, and he reaches in and he pulls out this nasty little pokey thing, and he puts it off to the side, and it's like. You know, as a doctor, he wouldn't be like real casual about this. And he's like, "Okay, I just put some uh, some antiseptic stuff in there and some painkiller, and you should be fine now." And yes. I'm like, "There's something magical going on." With these and two. the book goes into it. <laughs> if you don't want to wait for the show series and you want to do both, get the book, and the book will tell you. It's fascinating. <laughs> so wow. there's yeah. So it seems like there's been several times where I'm like. They're they're going to the the common mm -hmm. you know they're they're following the path that everybody's followed and I'm like no they're not quite you know you, you get a little deeper so yes I was ready to dismiss the show the first mm -hmm. fifteen minutes we were having trouble watching it anyways and it's like your she series you read it and you go oh yeah, well, the further you go the, yes. the deeper the layers go mm -hmm. and, it, and it reconnects so that's yes. cool too so that it's yeah. not all just sort of random but like I said. It kind of if if the witches weren't so mean, I could root yeah. for them more. You yeah. know, yeah. The the one person who's actually like sort of the nice one of the group, Ingrid. Yeah, Ingrid um, seems, but she might be dark and just hiding under a. Oh, so I'm far she's very very innocent little librarian, but that poor girl has. I mean, if ever there was like a cost of magic and consequences mm -hmm. for things you've done, this girl is getting kicked in the teeth. Yeah. Everything she does, she tries to save her aunt. She doesn't realize her aunt's gonna like come back because yeah, because she has nine lives. So she, you know, it's like oh my gosh, grabs this book, uh, resurrection spell. There we go. Does a resurrection spell, and the aunt's like, "You didn't do that. You tell me you didn't do that." She's like, "What? What? What?" She's like, "You bring somebody you love back to life." Somebody you love's gotta die. It's a balance, and she's like, "No, oh, is I that love the cop? Who's my friend dies? Die. die, yeah." So is that? Like, oh, I, I don't know who's who's died, but there was an episode. I know who's died. Like, oh, you I, know who's died? I missed. I missed the episode you're talking about, and I was wondering how that guy died. Is that her boy? Was it her boyfriend? The, it was the, the cop boyfriend. The cop. Yeah, yes. she was like trying so hard not to like him because he wanted to start dating her, and she's like, yeah. I, can't, "I can't love you, I can't love you." And then her uh -huh. her best friend who just got pregnant because she cast the spell to get her pregnant, uh -huh. um, she goes into the hospital and she's hemorrhaging, and they're like, she, they don't think she's going to make it. They don't think the baby's going to make it. They're going to die. And she's like, "Oh no, oh no, it's all my fault." And she's crying and she runs outside. And she, you know, and the cop guy just happens to be there and he like comforts her and. And she's like, you know, it's all my fault. He's like, no, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's okay. It's okay. And then they look up at each other and they kiss. And then you could see, like, there's this moment where she's like, you were really so awesome. And then, like, blood starts to come out of his nose. And yeah. She's like, oh my god. Oh my god. And they're like, you know, get the ambulance. Get the ambulance. And they and and they find out, like, just then as he's dying, or at least that you know they're out there. They're doing CPR yeah. on him and stuff. 
um, they find out that the friend is going to live, that she's perfectly fine now. So it's like the he curse shifted. shifted to him as soon as he became available. Because, you know? <laughs> because he was more important in her life in that moment than the friend was. You know what I mean? It had yeah. to be like, yeah, I would think. Cause yeah. Game closer. I wonder. Well, see, she's done something now because he's a spirit. This is what I was watching before the server kicked me off. I was like, how could he be dead and people are going to his funeral and he's in her bedroom and they're talking? But he didn't know he was dead. See, he didn't know. He didn't know he was a spirit. Ah. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting there and he's like, well, I need to go to work. And she's like, no, no, take the day off and spend it with me. We've had a great time. She wasn't telling him. And then finally, oh, no. after so much time together, he's like, look, seriously, i got to go. So she tells him he's dead and he can't go to work because people are going to his funeral. And he's like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. No, are you yeah. watching me? You know what I mean? And, yeah. and then she's like, no, it really happened. And she, she goes, remember the last thing we kissed? At, you know, she's saying the hospital and then you died. You died of an aneurysm, a brain aneurysm. And then she, and then he looked at himself in the mirror, and he saw the blood coming down his nose, mm -hmm. and he was like, you know, freaking out a little, like, <laughs> yeah. is this real? And then she's just like, I can help you, I can help you, it's okay, I can help you, you're a ghost straight now, but you're here. And then she starts doing this spell on him, chanting these words, and he's going, mm -hmm. you're crazy, you're crazy, and he storms out, and he leaves her. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, I, that's interesting, because mm -hmm. I don't know if, What's going to happen there? I mean, does he? Yeah. Does he think he's a ghost? Does she think she's great? Does she have to go chase him down now? I mean, has it? She was putting some sort of spell on him, and you know she did a spell before because what was he doing in her bedroom? She had to have mm -hmm. brought his spirit there somehow. Yeah, it's one of those the danger of magic thing. It's like, did you not learn from your lesson when he died? Like, are you going to do something? Like, he's a spirit now. He could be going on to his afterlife, but she's going to tangle him up in some kind of cockamamie. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like when you tell your kids, see, the whole spell, you're not going to know your magic, and you're not going to do magic, and you're not going to die thing. Every time you tell your kids, you try to comfort and show, um, shelter your kids from doing stuff, what happens? They do exactly what you're trying to shelter them from. Look at these kids. They're doing magic left and right and putting people in pain. Yeah, they're whipping it out. Like, <laughs> they're they're magic nature. all over. <laughs> and it just started. You just uh -huh. started. Yeah. So yeah, let me see what are my notes here. I wanted, I did want to give a shout out to um, the guy who plays the the librarian. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. uh, his character, you said his his character's name was Hudson. In real life, it's Tom Tom Link. You think? Yeah. Is that how you yeah. He was on Buffy. And he cracks uh -huh. me up. He just, he's not had a lot. He's not been in every episode. But he was so funny. When they were in the very first episode and the, and the, and the sister that's a librarian, Ingrid, she's yeah. like, you know, I don't believe in magic, but I've studied it all my life. You know, <laughs> I've written my dissertation on it and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and her friend is like, you know, I, I keep not getting pregnant. I keep not getting pregnant. And we've used up, you know, tons of money to try and have this happen. And she's like, here, let's do a spell. And so they're like, you know, hey, to Hudson, you know, you want to join us in spell? He's like, only if I can make hats. <laughs> <laughs> so he makes them all paper winch hats. <laughs> yeah. And they stand and they draw on the floor with the um, with the chalk and stuff. And they make a uh -huh. circle around her. And, you know, it was, just, it was so cute. And he's like, as long as I can make hats, I'm, you know, like, that made me happy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he is a fun character. I've only seen him a couple times. I've seen him in that scene too. Yeah, yeah. and he, I think he, you said he played Andrew on Buffy. And he was mm -hmm. that kind of guy on Buffy too. Like he was, he would just pull out the funny stuff. And he's a little geeky, but he's adorable. Uh huh. He's like the the the, the guy friend, the gay guy friend, or something. You know, you know yeah, like silly. <laughs> Like, mm -hmm. non threatening, you don't have to worry about him. He's just, you know, there to make you laugh. Yeah. Right. So, what else do we have to say about the show? I'm looking at my notes real quick. They have good special effects. Yes. For television. Yeah. For uh, Lifetime, too. Yeah. yeah. Lifetime. Yeah, you think Lifetime, that's not your sci fi. No. You know, where you go for sci fi. So. Yeah, and I'm really shocked that they're actually doing this. I honestly, and I, I think, I mean, I'm glad Lifetime is doing the show because. Hey, we need some witches on TV. But, I mean, I personally would love to have seen the show done by CW since they're so awesome at Urban mm -hmm. Fantasy. Anyway, look at all the stuff they're doing. I mean, I would they love to They might feel like they're overloaded, though. You know? I mean, they've got 
a lot of shows. They do, but don't you think their take on it would have been probably better? No, no, because the CW is the one that did Charmed. It would have been Charmed. Oh, it would have been Charmed. It would have been Charmed. Yeah. Again. Oh, I forgot yeah. that. Yeah. See, I was thinking the Tomorrow People and... They're actually doing the Tomorrow People really well. Oh, my um, God, aren't they? Not to drift yeah. off on the Tomorrow People, but <laughs> I... We, we just... I, James James is actually into it. We're we both get into it because normally he's like, whatever, watch your show, honey, watch your show. And the last yeah. night I'm like, I really got to catch up on the Tomorrow People. I mean, t tonight they're going to air it, and I'm, I haven't even seen last week's. And I go, well, I'll watch it. I'll watch Tomorrow People tomorrow. <laughs> and he goes, he was like, no, 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 you can watch it now. And I'm like, okay. And he turned off the TV because I have we have to watch it on the computer. And he mm -hmm. sat there and watched the whole thing. I'm like, it is good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a really, I mean, the story doesn't, it's not fake. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it's fake, but I mean, it doesn't, right. it seems very logical for a fantasy. Yeah, like if know, those um, events could occur, yeah. this story could occur. And yeah. everybody's reaction to everything seems legit, very, like how yeah. I would really see real people reacting mm -hmm. and being, yeah. Okay, I drifted. I didn't mean to drift, <laughs> but I, I love that show. But yeah, The Witches of East End, maybe I'll go back to if I can catch it. I'm going to have to record it or something. No, I don't. No, I have Lifetime. I can record it. I can start watching. I just feel like I'm getting too many shows. Like I'm Yeah, yeah. I don't time. think you necessarily need to like, overload on the show. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I'll have yeah. something new for you to just yeah, because I still week. got Lost Girl coming up. <laughs> you know, I've got Lost Girl. I've got. I mean, I'm sitting there going, I'm going to be overloaded with shows. You have to and catch up on the gr on Grimm. And <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, Grimm's getting man. Grimm's good too. Well, we just did a podcast on it. it that was, yeah. <laughs> Grimm's good too. And then uh, we're we're probably I'm, I'm I just got an email um, earlier this week from the the ladies that did. The Vampire Diary Unofficial Guide. I'm excited to do it, but wouldn't you know I just threw out that email with the PDF file? Because no. I was like, well, <laughs> they probably blew us off and we're not going to do anything. And I I'll just threw it, it out. I'll Thank send it to Thank you. Yeah. I threw it out yesterday and you, mm -hmm. then you, or something like that. It was, I mean, just now. Just yeah. now. So maybe in a week or, or two we can get, get the mm -hmm. schedule to work out and we can get Yeah. It. And you'll. Yeah. Be like overloaded with vampire diaries. <laughs> well, you, you liked um, the originals, which yeah. was the spinoff from the vampire mm -hmm. diaries. So. Yeah. And see, I can't keep up with that one either. And I really like that. And I just, I, mm -hmm. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta watch little pieces Stream of each one. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just kind catch of. Up. Yeah, and then a lot of them do like um, catch up stuff, like on their website or on their YouTube channel. Like mm -hmm. that's what I did with. Um, with Grimm is I went and saw the recap of, of season two and stuff. And it, it's mm -hmm. funny the way they do the recap. The guy that's, he's like, he doesn't get like, cause they have a lot of those terms in Grimm. It's like, I don't know how you spell it. I don't know how you say it. And yeah. He doesn't either. So he's like, you know, pufferfish dude and top hat guy. And <laughs> 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 he's like, which is the way you would describe it if you were, you know, just trying to tell your friend about it, you know. Yeah. Pufferfish dude, he spits at him, you know. <laughs> 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 and the zombies weren't really zombies. They were doing this and this, you know, so he's yeah. funny to listen to. That is funny. Right. <laughs> so, Witches of East, and I would have, if I would have just watched the first episode, I would have been like, it's not worth it. But four episodes in, I'm like, okay, it's got some potential, you know. So it's got viewing potential. So it had a slow start. End on this one for people. Yeah. And then you said this, the the book series is. I so, yeah. So. I think the book was. I think it's so much better. But then that's probably why they took it and made a show with it. But mm -hmm. they had to tweak it. Why yeah. tweak it? Why? If it's a good book. <laughs> I mean, they're doing okay, but still, why? <laughs> as long as they stay with the book, I think it's going to be a really good series. Mm. You know, maybe maybe they're doing this because Charmed went off, and people, Charmed had a huge following, so maybe they felt like, okay, we need some witches in here, and we can't do three witches. We need at least four. We need four <laughs> witches. we got to up it. we got to one-up it, yeah. Yeah, we got to one-up the show. 
They need to have like more male witches too. It's always assumption that it's going to be. It's always All a our female. female power thing, I guess. Yeah. Well, how many men watch? So I guess you know your lifetime. You're you're talking to a female audience there. Yeah. Notice the men are the eye candy. <laughs> the women are the witches. You know what I mean? They're more. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So this has been a fun episode. Uh, yeah. I didn't. I, I could say more, but it would give stuff away from the book. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, right. I got, I know <laughs> I know where it's going. Yeah. <laughs> does that does that spoil it for you? As a no, or? it makes me want to be keep an eye on this show. It makes me want to keep an eye on because I can see where they're staying with the storyline a bit. Mm -hmm. Like I can see, now that I'm like, oh, that's why blah blah blah. So yeah, yeah. I think and it's it called the Wis Witches of East End. The books. Yeah. Mm hmm Yep. So there you go. Go get yeah. it on Kobo, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Yeah, Oval, it's got wherever. great reviews. High so. books. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, are we ready to wrap this up? I am. Okay. I don't know how long we've been on, but I, I am because I can... about fifty minutes. I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. All right. Yeah. I'm just happy the baby didn't wake up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you next time. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye to whoever's watching us live. And one of your You've been listening to the <laughs> Ultimate Urban Fantasy Podcast. Find us on the web at ultimateurbanfantasy.com. Make sure you sign up for the mailing list for updates and goodies. And hook up with us on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and YouTube. You can find out more about Archer and Ravenheart's The She Series at shetouch.com. That's S-I-P-H-E-T-O-U-C-H dot com. See you next time. Can you see anything? I know we're going off the air, but... Yeah, it still looks the same. Okay, let me hit the stop broadcast.